In this morning's dish, Patrick O'Connell, who has been described as, quote, a rare chef with a sense of near perfect taste like a musician with perfect pitch. What's more, he is self-taught, though he was strongly influenced as a child by his grandmother, who seemed like to him like a magician in the kitchen. Chef O'Connell is a Washington, D.C. native, and for almost 40 years, he has presided over the Inn at Little Washington and the Blue Ridge Mountains. The Inn was dubbed one of the top 10 restaurants in the entire world, and dining there has been called a life-changing experience. We now want to welcome Chef Patrick O'Connell to the dish this morning. Always good, good morning. to see you. Thank good you. morning. Good morning. I got to tell you, you're a fine chef, but you're also a fine dresser. I've been talking about this blazer <laughs> uh, for the past couple of minutes. Tell us what we have here today. Well, we have a little taste of the Virginia countryside in springtime. So we have uh, some wild morels mm. that are sort of our version of the, uh, the, the truffle, this magical thing that appears only in spring, these little conical-shaped mushrooms. And uh, we relish them. We have some turnips from the garden, and we have the first asparagus, some wild rice pilaf. And under here, we have a little miniature baked fancy, Alaska yeah. with some bees. So many people come to the inn to celebrate special occasions that we make these for birthdays and anniversaries. It's so and beautiful too, that's pulled sugar, right? It is, it is. We actually make it in a mixing bowl and dribble the sugar in and then let it set and pop it out. I wanna ask about your grandmother. Because well, she seems like she was a very influential, I mean we said magician, but how do you remember her in the kitchen? Well, she was able to make something out of nothing, which is really the transformative process that cooking is all about. And the story and, of grandmothers as well, right? Yes. Well, they do seem sort of like magical people. Uh, there was always something wonderful to eat. She had a little apple tree outside and some strawberry plants. And she would just step out, fill her apron, come back in and make a magical dinner for a huge number of people. You're also self-taught. How did you find cooking? Well, the first job I ever had was in a restaurant, uh, Mr. H. Hamburgers in Clinton, Maryland. <laughs> I was 15, I had a paper route, and I was bitten by a few too many dogs. And I rode my bike up to the back door, knocked on the door, and said, I'd like a job. And they were my people. You don't have to be normal to work in a restaurant. <laughs> And so from then, I mean, because I think people look at the Inn in Washington and it's hard for them to realize it started with one structure that used to be a garage. Is That's that right? That's right. We rented half of a garage for $200 a month to yeah. start. How did the evolution <clears throat> happen? Because, I mean, it's just breathtaking. The images, the drapery, the colors. Well, it's been uh, a work in progress for 38 years. <clears throat> so day by day, little by little, moment by moment, decade by decade. What's your secret to uh, customer service? A lot of people from around the entire world, they have to go to this place and try the food out. What's your secret, if you could share it? Well, it's creating a culture of service, which is very, very simple. You simply have to be the guest. You have to get inside the guest's mind and feel as the guest feels. Is it ever overwhelming? Because I would think cooking for queens and kings and presidents and staying at that level of success must sometimes be overwhelming. Yeah, the pressure alone. There are a few sleep disorders <laughs> 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 that come with the job. Uh, but you get used to it. Uh, it's very, uh, it, it's, it's a buzz. It's a constant high. You know, you feed off the adrenaline. It's an addiction. You were also instrumental in developing a regional cuisine. Can you tell us about that? Well, nothing was delivered there because no one knew where it was. The village has 133 people, and it's called Washington, Virginia, but no one in Washington, D.C. knew of it. So no deliveries were coming there. We could only get milk to start. So we had a little farm, and then all of our neighbors grew things. It was just what you do when you live in the country. So it was a little like stone soup. People started bringing things, and I started organizing the menu around what I could get right there. Uh, not because it was chic or fashionable, but it, it worked. And not only and worked, you, I feel like you have impacted really the oh, entire yes, nation have. in terms of that sense. Well, we've really foraged and looked for what is right there. And the idea is to give people something at any given moment that they couldn't get anywhere else in the world at that time. Well, as I hand this dish to you to get your signature on it, we want to ask you if you could have this meal with any person, past or present, who would that person be? Well, I think I'd like to invite my grandmother back <clears throat> so she could see what uh, seed she planted 
and uh, she'd she'd have a few critical comments, I'm sure. <laughs> I think she, I, <laughs> I think she'd appreciate the magic that you've created for us, well, Chef thank O'Connell. You. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. And for more on Patrick O'Connell and the dish, please head to our website at cbsthismorning.com.